In this lesson, we are going to learn about how we measure atmospheric pressure using a barometer. These are learner's outcome. And these are some of prior knowledge that you need to know. We measure atmospheric pressure using a device known as a barometer, and this is a picture of a barometer. So how does this device actually measure atmospheric pressure? Before we understand how it works, we have to understand how by sucking on a straw, we are actually able to suck the water up a straw. Most people know that by sucking on the straw, the liquid will be sucked up to reach the mouth uh, through the straw. So something like this. But what is the reason that the uh, liquid actually moves up against gravity? Um, you actually just only suck the air away. Why would the liquid actually move up to replace the air? The answer actually lies in the surrounding atmospheric pressure. First of all, do you notice that the uh, water level in the straw and out of straw is usually the same? is because the atmospheric pressure in the straw and out straw is the same. So they actually press down equally. So that's why it is level. But by sucking out the air in the straw, you're actually changing the pressure that is within the straw. How? It is because by sucking the air out of straw, we are actually removing the air. And this in turn uh, create a pressure difference uh, compared to external atmospheric pressure. So by removing the air, you're actually making inside weak, okay, relatively. So the relatively stronger atmospheric pressure is actually able to push down on the water level in the cup. And since this is a liquid, you'll find that the pressure will be able to transmit into the straw and push up. So the pressure will actually force the liquid into the straw and push up. And since the pressure in the straw is relatively weaker, so you find that it's not able to stop the liquid from rising. Therefore, the liquid would rise. So based on what we learned, so the idea is that if we reduce the gas pressure in the straw, and the external atmospheric pressure will push down on the liquid and push it up within the straw. So the pattern is that if we reduce the pressure even further, the external atmospheric pressure, though the same, will be able to push the liquid column uh, in the straw further up. But however, there's actually a maximum height in which the liquid column can rise in the straw. That's where when there's no air or gas in the straw, or there's vacuum in the straw. Why? Okay, this graph actually shows the height relationship in the versus the pressure in the straw. And the pattern is that if we reduce the pressure in the straw, you find that the height would rise up. So this is the pattern. And if we reduce even further and up to the pressure, uh, over here, which is actually equal to zero, you find that the height will reach a certain uh, number. Okay, but uh, since the gas pressure is reduced to zero, it's already at the minimum. It means that the height over here must be the maximum. We may use this idea to measure the strength of the atmospheric pressure using a barometer. And a simple barometer actually comprises of just a, a glass of mercury column. And on top of this column over here, this is a vacuum and there's no uh, pressure that's exerting on top. So pressure over here is zero. The strength of the surrounding atmospheric pressure is actually measured by the length or height of the mercury column that's above the base level. What do I mean by that? That's actually comparing uh, the top and the base level over here, and this is the height. So this is an indication of how strong the atmospheric pressure is. It's because if we bring this uh, barometer to a location that is of a lower atmospheric pressure, such as high up in the mountain, you find that the lower atmospheric pressure is not able to support the mercury column that is actually pressing down. Remember, this is a liquid, so you find that the mercury column is actually actually pressing down over here. But since the atmospheric pressure is not as strong as before, so what will happen is that the mercury column will actually flow out. And thus, the length of the base level will be reduced. And we use this height, new height, uh, which is reduced to indicate that the strength of the atmospheric pressure is reduced. So this height actually is an indication of the atmospheric pressure. So in summary, this is the strength of the atmospheric pressure is how much it can force. Okay, think in terms of how strong this is, so it can force the mercury column to go up. And center atmospheric pressure is known to be 760 mmHg or 76 centimeter Hg, 
Okay, what do you mean by the unit? Is Hg is actually the chemical symbol of mercury, and mmHg is simply millimeter of mercury. It means that the atmospheric pressure at the sea level is able to push or support 760 or 76 centimeter of mercury in the tube. But we know that the unit for pressure is actually Pascal or unique Newton per meter square. So what is the atmospheric pressure in Pascal? We can actually easily just convert uh, this 76 centimeter mercury into Pascal as we know that pressure of a liquid is actually height times density times g. So the pressure exerted by the column mercury is 76 centimeter tall, but we need to know the density of mercury, which is 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. If we substitute in the number, 76 centimeter is 0.76 meter, and this and this, you'll find that it's roughly about 100,000 over Pascal. So sometimes we estimate to be 100 kilopascal. Why do we use mercury? Um, can we use water? Yes, we can use water, but there will be one issue because we need to find a column that is tall enough to contain the water. It's because mercury is actually much denser than water. Okay, this is the comparison. But how would that impact the height of the liquid column? So if we use water, let's calculate what is the column that we need to use. So atmospheric pressure is actually equal to pressure exerted by the water column. And we substitute in, this is what we found just now. And uh, the formula is the same, height times the density. But in this case, the density of water is, uh, the liquid is 1000. So by substituting a number, we are supposed to find what is the height of the water column that is correspond to the atmospheric pressure. And by substituting in and rearranging the formula, we find that it will roughly work out to be 10 over meters. So we need a column that is roughly 11 meters tall to contain the water that's supposed to measure atmospheric pressure. Though 10 meters seems like a very long length, we're actually comparing atmospheric pressure that is, atmospheric pressure is actually comparing kilometers of air and it's actually equivalent to 10 meters of water. Or you can say that one atmospheric pressure is roughly about 10 meters of water. That's also to say that if you are uh, working at the bottom of a lake that is 200 meters deep, we are actually subjected to water pressure that is 20 times the atmospheric pressure. So people working in deep sea submarine are in a very highly pressurized environment. Okay, a 40 parameter of course will give wrong reading of uh, atmospheric pressure. So instead of 76, they may read 74. What could actually cause the parameter to be 40? Uh, one possible reason is that the space above the mercury column is actually not completely vacuum or it contains some air or gas. And how does that situation lead to the wrong reading? So let's have this situation. You have some air or gas trapped inside in the 40 barometer. The trapped air will actually exert some pressure on the uh, mercury column. And this will press down the, uh, on the mercury column and thus reducing the length of the column. So this will of course, uh, which we reach as height, may actually give the wrong reading. Okay, it is actually supposed to be longer, higher, but yet the reading is smaller. So the extent of error depends on the pressure exerted by the trap error. So the more pressure exerts, the lower the reading of the mercury column. And assuming that atmospheric pressure is 76 centimeter mercury, um, the table next will show the effect of trap air on the readings. So we find that if the trap air pressure is one, the reading will be 75, two, 74, 3, 73, and so on. So I hope that you notice that uh, by adding the trapped air, you find that this will always be equal to 76, which is the atmospheric pressure. Why is that so? It's because the pressure exerted on the same level on the liquid is equal. Let's have this three A, B, C. Okay, these two are 40. So we find that by comparing on mercury on the liquid level is equals to atmospheric pressure. So we find that uh, at this level, pressure is all equals to 76, including those that's one that's inside the straw or the column. So, but the pressure for the 41 depends on two parts. One is the uh, pressure exerted by the gas. One is the pressure that's exerted by the mercury column. So you have two pressure and this will be equivalent to 76 centimeter mercury. So therefore, if this is a half a higher pressure uh, of a trapped air, you find that this reading would be 
lower. That's the end of today's lesson. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.